since I've been to Tokyo Disney Sea. I think it's been years since you were at Tokyo Disney Sea. Because when we used to live here, we go to Disneylando so often, but not Disney Sea. Um, and my, my now second favorite ride in the world, but then first favorite ride in the world, is in Tokyo Disney Sea, which is Journey to the Center of the Earth. Uh, Disney Sea is an awesome place. It's uh, like hyper themed. Uh, the place looks amazing. And it's got a whole load of uh, new stuff for summer. So it's summer right now. It's got a whole load of new stuff for summer. So um, we're gonna make our way over there, get into the park, sort out our fast passes, and then maybe go see the Little Mermaid show first, maybe. Now arriving. Please stay clear until the gates have opened. It's Kawaii! You can look out in front of this one around, which is just here. Um, it's pretty awesome. It's actually really spacious. So if you turn you around this way, you can see behind me, there's loads of space, which is amazing. Uh, unfortunately though, it does cost. Like, that's the one thing that really bugs me about um, this monorail system. It's very, very good. Um, it's on time, there's loads of trains but it, you, you do have to pay to use it, so that's kind of a bit of a pay. But the view out the front is great, so mm, swings around first. coming up is so awesome once you enter into this sort of facade of buildings which actually is this whole area around here um, the building on top of here is a hotel sorry it's a little windy but as you go through you can already see it right the volcano is straight on the other side it just looks so good it looks so so good this is amazing so over in the volcano area, that's where Journey to the Center of the Earth is and 20,000 leagues over under the sea. You walk to get there, you walk up from the right. We're gonna go though to the left, through the Mediterranean Harbor to the American waterfront to get our Toy Story Fast Pass. Well, that's a shame. The Toy Story Mania Fast Pass ticketing is closed already and it is 8.39 in the morning. So we'll just have to see what we do about that later. Um, now I'm wondering whether the park is more busy than I thought it was going to be. Oh, look at Mickey. Yeah, that would have been him yesterday in the typhoon. We're coming up to our first look at the Marine Life Institute. You can probably see it over the water over there. So that is the new Nemo ride. And um, we're going to get fast passes for it. That actually worked out pretty well. Uh, the fast pass for Nemo and friends Sea Rider is already about midday. And you see this queue of people over here. They're actually queuing for fast passes. So if we didn't get this fast pass, I actually think that we may not have been able to get a fast pass for Nemo and friends at all. So it worked out pretty well. Steven's just picking on the fast pass now. And then we're going to head over to the Little Mermaid show, which is... Interesting! Yeah, you're Twelve back! 12 of 5! Woohoo! Here it is! Steven's taking a shashing with his a picture with his phone. I am gonna do the same thing. Oh, sorry, there you go. And there's my phone. <laughs> Oh, that aircon is lovely. But look at this. And the music just makes it. King 
Triton's cart, dolphin cart thing. Uh, looks amazing. It's a little shiny and very glistening. I like the bubble effect in the background as well. They do such a good job in this place. Look at the ceiling too. I don't know if the colors are gonna come out. Um, but the lighting in here is great. And then there's the Royal Pro Proclamation uh, to welcome everybody here. And then, what I also love about this is you can generally see down into the ocean. Um, we're going to take a route around this way and go down underneath the seas. Generally, this is a land for little kids. Uh, so they do little kid rides. Uh, it's pretty good because it's air conditioned and Tokyo weather um, can be quite difficult at times. It's rather predictable, it just can be quite difficult. Um, look at this. <laughs> Wait, go past. Uh, so it's, it's good that they do this as the sort of kids area. But you just have to come and see it anyway because it looks so good. This is a song sheet here, and this is the theatre. It's around theatre, so wherever you sit, you have a view of something. Very blue. <laughs> the colours haven't adjusted. Uh, we don't think we can film in here, so we might have to say goodbye to you for now. And um, yeah, we'll see you all in a bit with a review. We'll review, right? Yep. Honest review. So, what did you think? I did, actually, I thought it was it's a lot better this time than I remember it being, but I don't think it's changed. Yeah. Um, so, for some context, this show has changed in the last three years or something, I can't remember. Prior to th this concert show, uh, okay, actually, I'm gonna probably give some backup. The show that we just went to go and see was, at, was a concert. So, the Princess Ariel and her sisters put on this kind of like the concert where they sing a bunch load of the of the songs and an original song as well right yeah, there was yeah. an original song too um the previous show was a short telling of the little mermaid story with a different ending uh in the original show uh, the ending was that they sing under the sea and she just decides to stay in the sea yeah as which... the office her the contract and everything and she's just like nah Fine. Nah, it's, it's fine. I'll stay here. So it, it was it, it was a brilliant show, but it didn't have the same ending. So it was really strange. And so I think they may have canned it because of that reason. Because they couldn't show it in that um, in that short time. And they replaced it with this concert. And and it was good. It, like I, I I when I first went to see it, I was like, yeah. But I thought it was pretty decent this time. Yep. When she sings part of your world, you feel like you're in the grotto and stuff. That was really cool. Yeah, how they did, uh, built the grotto up was like, it was in side space rather yeah. than the actual grotto being. Yeah. But that was good. Keith Triton animatronic was awesome. He had projection mapping on his face. And I, Sebastian and Flounder were awesome. But like the uh, Princess Ariel has to do a lot of acrobatics. So I think she was really good. Um, but I love Flounder. No. Anyway, we are going to go have a look around the shops and then we're going to go to the next show, right? We're going to do shows this morning, right this afternoon. That's how it's going to be. So good. Oh my gosh. So uh, guys, we went to see this show out of Shadowland. There was no no tape, no video in there, so I didn't get any. I'm sure somebody show, I'm yeah. sure somebody has done a sneaky and taken a video of it. If I find it on YouTube, I'll link it below. Um it's it, it's it's an original show uh, for Tokyo Disneyland or Disney Sea. And it follows the story of a, um, a group of a group of people that are trekking through a forest. And the little the, there's a little girl in their party called May, and she gets lost. And she follows this demon bird, right? It's yeah, like yeah. a demon bird. She follows this demon bird like to the Shadowlands. Yeah. But not my face. Yeah. So sorry, it might be a little windy. Um, so she follows this demon bird to the Shadowland. It's this land that's been infected by this bird, right? Yeah. And he's sort of spread his evil malice around and everything is dark and it's all been infected. And so she uses some magic powers that she receives and she, she sort of fixes everything. And the whole story is about her 
coming out of her shell and going to battle the final bird. And when the bird came out at the end, that was so fast. So that there's dancing in it, there's like some ballet sort of contemporary style dance. The whole set is made to look like a theater, but they project on it. There's part where she visits a lake that speaks to her. There was acrobatics, um, the set moves. I, the music was so good. I wept the whole way. The whole way through it, I cried. It was, it was so good. It was so good. Oh my god. Um, we're mindlessly walking now. I haven't even. I don't even know where we're going. They have a CD. I, I want. If they have a CD, I want the music. <laughs> if there's a CD, I'm buying the music. Oh my god. Okay. All right. We're gonna figure out what we're doing. Um, if you come, definitely go to see the show. It was. It was so good. Yeah, the best theater, the best theater show in, on like any Disney park. Best theater show. I think. We're not going on this ride today. Uh, this is Raging Spirits. It's one of those very tightly um, sort of packed coasters uh, that rock you around quite a lot. And motion sickness reasons means we won't go on this. But the exterior of it looks so freaking cool. Look at that. That is real fire, people. Um, yeah, I have no idea how they do that, but it looks awesome. There's one of the carts going past now. The, uh, kind of rocks you around. You may have noticed a change in my appearance. Uh, that is because it was too hot for hair down, so I have put hair up. But I wanted to let you guys know that we have come to the Arabian section. Arabian, what's it called? Um, it's the Arabian section. Anyway, it's awesome because um, it has the Jasmine's Magic Carpet ride, and it looks like sort of pirate almost meets Aladdin. It's awesome here. Anyway, we'll take you around and show you. We are going to go to the Sinbad ride because we love it. It's a bit like a small world version if it was in Arabian land. Yeah, pretty much. So it's Jasmine's flying carpets over on this side. This is the Sinbad ride, the ride that we're just about to go on. There is, oh, I love this so much, it's the open sesame food cart. I think they sell churros. There's the entrance into the actual sort of real, like very, very, very Aladdin-esque area. And you see what I mean about the pirate thing? They have a few ships and a beach over here. And like way on the other side, you might be able to see it popping out over the trees. That's where Atlantica is. And then behind that is where the volcano is. It's the best thing about Disney Sea is just how amazingly themed it is everywhere. And the views you get of everything is so, so good. Right, we're gonna go on to Sinbad. I love this ride because Sinbad has a very, very cute tiger called Chandu and he is so quiet. <laughs> in the Argo. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> that was cool. I don't think I've seen Jeff Hall with the Argo before. No. It's a boy. That was so cool. I love Sinbad Ride. Chandu the tiger makes it for me. But he's so cute. Right, we're going to the actual Agrabah now. City of mystery and enchantment. Sugar dates and pistachios. Oh, look at the jasmine fountain. <laughs> and all these 
these people are queuing to have a picture with um, Jasmine and Aladdin. <laughs> I love this shop because this is the one where you get the view of Agrawal. Yeah, and over there there's a sort of genie payment area which is amazing as well. This is also the crystal store and they will do etching over here. Uh, seems like you can have a picture and then get it, it'll get something etched onto it, which is cute. I love the genie gravy boat. I think they actually serve curry here in these um, in these style pots here in Japan. And I think there's a genie curry dish and a genie curry boat. And this is the main Agrabah section. This is amazing. That's the Magic Land Theatre where they do the 4D genie show. I've never seen it. Apparently it's quite good. Maybe we'll get time to it today. And that is the double carousel, the genie double carousel. It's awesome. You can buy different color genies. It's amazing. This is the entrance to the main area and that's back into the Agrabah Marketplace shop where we were just at and that's back into the Agrabah Marketplace area where Jasmine and Aladdin meet and greet us. I don't know if you guys can see but the pirate thing, oh my gosh, <laughs> the pirate thing's going on at the moment because it's summer, it's so hot here in Japan. Uh, they are spraying water all over the crowd. It's hilarious. <laughs> Dory and Nemo inside of the fish thing and then also down there can you guys see it sort of I'll put it in the right in the middle of the screen that's a hidden Mickey he's on a roll today he's found loads <laughs> the special Nemo drink for the release of this ride and um, we're churro, we're gonna get a churro as well uh, but we were gonna tell you what we thought of the ride, what did you think of the ride? I liked it, it was cute. Yeah it was good, so basically they uh, like reimagined the Storm Rider. The Storm Rider was a simulator of where you fly through a storm. I never rode it because the simulation was supposed to be quite intense and that tends to make me feel sick. Um, but this one is a lot more gentle, or I don't know actually, because I never rode the Storm Rider one, <laughs> so I don't really know if this was more gentle or not. But it was quite gentle. You go into fish, uh, you go into a fish submarine, you get shrunk down and you get to swim with Nemo and Marlin and Dory and Squirt, 
and the octopus guy, what's his name, Hank, Hank, Hank. 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 Yeah. and then you go into pipes, um, there's a bit where like kids try to get you out of the shallow water pool, um, there's, what else is that? You see Becky? Oh yeah, Becky too. Yeah, and you fly a little bit. So yeah, it was really good. It was it, like it was super cute. You get to see all the characters. I think kids will love it because you know you get to see all the characters in Nemo. Like that's the thing. And the and and the motion wasn't too intense. It was a long ride, and I did feel a little queasy, but not too bad. So if you do suffer from motion sickness, take your motion sickness pills. Um, but yeah, you shouldn't worry too much. It is doable. So anyway, now we're gonna wait. We're gonna get two Nemo slushies and one churro, and we'll show you them in a second. They are stripey like Nemo. That's so cool. <gasps> oh, it looks oishi so. Hi. So here we go. I have tasted a little bit already. Look at my straw. It's got like sort of popping balls inside of it. Bottom it is. A pineapple flavoured. And then you've got like the popping balls, which are really awesome. Uh, I'm trying to get to the icy bit. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's really good. Still pineapple, right? It's all pineapple. But they just call it pineapple. Generic fruit. And this is the orange churro. Oh, I like this. It does taste like orange. Oh. It's good. If you come to this area underneath the mountain, you can get a map of it. It's called Fortress Explorations, and the maps are here. Um, and in the map, it will show you. And it's windy. There you go. It'll show you all the cool things that you can find in Fortress Explorations. So there is other stuff that you can do in Fortress actually, like Explorations. You can do this kind of like game um, where I think you're solving mysteries or something. But it's all in Japanese, there's no English version yet. Hopefully they'll make one soon, this place is awesome. So according to the map, this is the illusion room. I don't know if it, it yeah, it sort of works. Inside of this concave thing. Makes it look more 3D. That's what it looks like, really. We're looking for stairs that are going to take us up. Oh, and in looking for stairs, we found Captain Jack meet and greet. So this is the cargo playground and that is the Renaissance ship. I think that what the new noise that we could hear before was partially coming from the Renaissance ship. Um, but it's a cool place to go and play and there's like stuff that you can do. It's awesome. But we're going up. Oh, the view from here is just amazing. Sorry, it's so windy. <laughs> um, I'll give you a panoramic of this shot because it looks so awesome. This looks like the alchemy lab. Very weird animals on that thing over there. So this is an omnicopter, uh, Leonardo da Vinci uh, invention that was never actually created. I believe he drew it, um, designed it, invented it, planned it, something. Uh, so yeah, this is over by the Alchemy Lab, and I think we're gonna pop into Chamber of the Planet in a minute. Uh, this is the sort of central area that we walked through before. Not too sure I was filming at that point. Over there is where you get the turkey leg. Turkey leg people, that's where you go. This is my favourite room. So up there is the sun and planets are revolving around it. You can see over here it's Saturn. It goes up to Saturn, it doesn't go further than that. Probably to do with when the planets were discovered. And that's what they had discovered at that time. And down here are turny cracks. You can turn a crank and then a planet will move. So let's see this one. Oh look, this is Earth. So if I turn this, I know it's kind of hard to get it going. Sorry for my fingers in the way. Oh my God, this is the other way. Okay, that's why it wasn't working. <laughs> so turn it around and then we'll see where is little Earth. There it is. 
So I'll continue turning it and holding the camera at the same time, which is that you can now see that it's moving around. I spent absolutely ages in this room once, getting all of the planets to line up, only for some kids to come in and then ruin it all. Um, but you know, everybody is allowed to come in and move the planets to where they want. Here they are, the cannons. I think you can do something to release them. I don't know quite what you do though. Oh, here we go. Give it another tug, shall we? All right, let's go. Wow. Okay, that was a total bust. I wonder if they plan on having busts. Right, what was that? Why did yours work? Yeah! Finally, we have just a little lookout post. This telescope here. Take some pretty cool pictures from here. I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, and I booked on the Japanese version of the Tokyo Disney website. That's all the food area back there. It's like Indy's crashed plane. Such a beautiful sky. It comes with a menu, but it's in Japanese. Fantasmic is five minutes away. We have this weird sort of barrier 